Welcome. Today we're going to talk about using Scratch as an image editor to create bitmap pixel art. 2.0 is pretty cool in that it lets you choose between vectors and bitmaps. We're going to use bitmap because when you are creating images in Scratch that you want to upload to other applications, it's much easier to manipulate using bitmap because bitmap, when you save it to your computer, automatically will give you a PNG file. So that was a little bit of the early technical part of the discussion. Now let's get down to the fun part and create the images. So you can see here on my left, I've created a couple of sample images. And when I say pixelated art, I mean where you go block by block and put the colors in. So we're going to start from scratch, in scratch. So first off, we're going to go to costumes. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the inside of each of these images I've worked on. The first one that popped up is an example of an image that I brought up from scratch by clicking on this icon here, choosing a sprite from the library, and then I decided to add a um, circle around him, put him in a little bubble. So we'll talk a little bit about how I did that. This guy here, the far left, is an example of a pixelated art object, where you can see that I went block by block and I used the paint options. And you can see here, if you go to the plus sign, you can make it bigger. So it's easier to see the blocks and control where the color goes. And I did a very similar thing with this little guy here. Make him a little bit bigger so you can see the details. So let's start with a new sp sprite. And I'll show you what I did. So if you go back to this left pane here, you'll see paint a new sprite on a little paintbrush here. So click on that and it will automatically take you to the little canvas screen here. I like to make it a little bit bigger so I can control my boxes. So I'm going to go click on it one time. I'm going to put it to 400%. And then what you do is you click on the rectangle toolbox. Now the, these appear if you are in, if you look down here, you see how it has bitmap mode and convert to vector. When you go to create a new sprite or new character, Scratch automatically takes you to bitmap mode. Bitmap mode, excuse me. If you import a sprite from Scratch, sometimes it'll go automatically to vector. You can switch back and forth by clicking on. So I do this, you'll see I get a different toolbar on the right hand side. And you can always change it back. It'll flip back and forth. And again, when I first started this video, we talked about we were going to use bitmap because of the way it exports so that you can bring your image into another application. You have to create in bitmap to get a PNG file. Anyhow, so back to how to create this. So click on the rectangle tool and you'll see you get two options down here. This will give you just an outline tool. So when I created the frog and I wanted the circle to go around him, I did the outline tool. So I'll show you the difference. You can control how thick the line is, is dragging this slider through. I'm stick it in the middle. And you change your color here. So I'm going to click pick black. And you just click on your screen. Ah, it gave me a, there we go. I had to pull it out to see because I made the line so thick that at first it looked like it was going to give me a solid. And then if you click, you see you get the boxes. You'll see it doesn't yet appear here yet. It won't appear on this side until you click outside get rid of the boxes because the boxes here let you also make other changes to it. So it's kind of cool. You get a lot of different ways you can do this. So click outside of it and you'll see now that it appears here. Scratch says, oh, okay, you're done. And it, the thing about 2.0 is it automatically saves as you go along, which can be good and can be bad, but just keep an eye on that. You can also at any point when you're working and you can't see it in this video, but there's a toolbar right above this that says File, and the file will give you the option of Save Now instead of waiting for our Scratch to automatically save. I think it saves at three or four minute intervals. All right. So if you do something on this, this canvas screen that you don't like, if you hit Control Z on your keyboard, it will take get rid of it. So it's kind of nice. It's like when you're working in Word. So you can kind of go back. It'll take you back one step before you created that. So you can keep hitting Control Z. If you've made a change for saves back, 
and you want to go back, just keep hitting Control Z until you get a blank screen, or you go back to where you wanted to pick up again. So, let's say when I was making this little guy here, I went ahead and I picked the solid, and I'm on my rectangle tool, and a little black, and then way I could control what square. So you'll get that. And you can kind of just continue along. The little boxes will disappear when you cl click again. Oops, excuse me. So you can kind of go around. It kind of lets you go around and navigate through. So you can see when I was creating his ears, I had to go to the little outline. So there's a lot of different things you can do. That's, you know, that's the nice thing about Scratch is that you can really get caught up in being doing a real artistic thing. And it's nice that you can do a lot with your animation this way because sometimes the programming is what you want to work on to give the effect but if you start out with a really good image it can save you some time based on what parts you have to animate. So yeah, I'm just kind of playing around here. You can see here, it's kind of nice you can see in real time what you're doing here on the screen as well. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you how if you bring an image already in Scratch and you want to modify it, how that works. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go over here and choose a sprite from the library. And in this case, I'm going to pick the crab. If you see, if you do this, then it automatically flips you over to your new sprite. I need to drag him over so you can see what's going on here. <coughs> You still have the sprite here, even if it's in progress, because again, Scratch saves as you go along, so you're not going to lose your work if you if you navigate out. So I have my new image here. To get your paint screen, go up to Costumes, and here you go. Now you can see you have these little slider bars, so you can kind of control where you're what you're looking at. And again, this is an example of what I was talking about earlier, where if you import something from scratch into your paint editor. You see down here it automatically goes to vector mode. I was click on connect to bitmap. And you're going to see your tools change over here to the left hand side. So I'm going to put him in a bubble like I did the frog. So what we would do here is I would click on the circle tool. Now of course you can freehand stuff but it's going to look pretty shaky. So if you want it to look very precise I would go ahead with the tools they already give you. And I'm going to make my line tool a little bit thinner because I don't really want the line to be the star of the show. I just want a little line to show. So we have, make sure this is selected. And then just pretty much click anywhere near him. You can resize and reposition your circle. So you can see here, I don't really have to have it exact, but don't worry about that because you will get the little boxes here so that you can reposition it. So in this case, I'm going to do this. A little bit more here. There we go. Okay. So the next tool that we're going to look at is the paint box tool. And the paint box tool is what controls what's going to go inside here. I mean, of course, you could leave it just like this. You see I have in my background blue, and you can see this is what it would look like if I didn't do anything but if I wanted to add something like I did here with Frog, where he was kind of a multicolor, and it, if you were in a bubble, or if you were trying to depict your character in a bubble, it might be nice to have that background look slightly different. The bubble background looks slightly different than the um, stage background. So I'm going to click on Paintbox. And here, it's going to default to the color of the outside line, but you might want that to be different. So if you go here and you pick a different color. It'll show up here. And I'm going to pick, it's kind of neat, it gives you the solid fill and then some sort of gradient, meaning some sort of partial fill, whether it's the um, top side or just from the inside. I'm going to pick the, you're going to do it for the middle, and then click inside, and you'll see it will give you exactly that. Now there's also some other cool effects you can do. It's going to give you a one-shot pick on that. But I see, I'll show you what happens if you say, oh, I want to try a different effect. If you click here, and then you click back inside, it's going to let you 
And it's going to say, it'll let you do parts of your, it does some kind of some funky stuff. You have to play around with it because it is, you know, kind of an artistic thing. But you'll see how it's giving me concentric circles. And let's see what it's going to do here. This is probably not the best color choice because it's, it's so light you can't really see. But you can see how he's adding. Yeah. So there, I don't know if that would be a desired effect. I mean, that's the good thing about artistry, right? One man's success is another man's failure, and one man's failure is another man's success. So, you know, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve and trying to tell your story. So, the other cool thing, just to wrap this up, is... Let's go back here. Anytime you change, see it said saving changes. So let's say one of the things about Scratch 2.0 that's different from Scratch 1.4 is that if you create a custom sprite, then you can bring that into another project. So let's say this little crabby guy, we want to use him in another file, a new project. So that's what that backpack feature is for. That's this little area down here. Now, when you first open Scratch, it makes it really tiny. And in fact, you can't even see it out of the screen. But there's a little triangle you can click on. So this little guy, if you click it, you see it makes it go away. And if you click the triangle again, it'll expand it. So all you have to do is drag this guy down here. Okay, and then if you go to the top, and which is outside of this screen, unfortunately, you do File and New. You'll see you get a blank. You'll get your usual blank scratch, and then make your backpack, expand your backpack, and you'll see now you can bring your new sprite over. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I'll be teaching this in the month of February, and so I wanted to make a copy of this instructional guide because it's one of the cooler features of Scratch, and it can take a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it really gives you a lot of power to tell your story in a unique way, and it was probably one of the more popular features that I've found kids get into when I teach Scratch. So I just wanted to make sure you had this so you could re-review it and also take a look and ask me questions. So, until the next time, keep scratching.